In this video we will be looking at index or indices laws. If you haven't watched or aren't fully confident with powers and roots, I recommend you go watch that first because that will give you a good understanding for all these rules here. So there are six main rules that we need to look at and that you need to know if you're taking your GCSEs. So the first rule is a fairly standard one you may have heard of already, but anything to the power of zero is one. So here we see 4x all to the power of zero makes one. That would be the same, for example, 2 to the power of zero, 1. 4 to the power of zero, 1. Everything will be 1. Okay, our second rule. So when we have the same base, so in this case the base is x, if we're timesing those together, then the powers we can add up. So x cubed times x to the 4 will make x to the 7, because 3 plus 4 makes 7. Now if we were to do it with something like this, a to the power of 4 times b to the power of 1, you can see that these bases aren't the same. So we can't do anything with that. That will stay as it is. Okay, rule number 3. x to the 7 divided by x to the 3. Now if when we times them, they add together, you might be able to guess what happens when they get divided. So x to the 7 divided by x to the 3. Again, we have the same base, so the rule is okay. 7 take away 3, we're going to get x to the power of 4. Now, another way of writing this, which is often quite common, is as a fraction, and that means the same as what the divide sign means. So it's just x to the 6 divided by x to the 2, and coincidentally, that is going to give us x to the 4 as well. Okay, rule number 4. x to the 3 brackets to the power of 2. So x to the power of 3 squared. Now what happens here is we actually multiply those two numbers together. So simply, it's just going to be x to the power of 6. And if we use this as an actual number, if we think about it, we've got 3 squared squared. So 3 squared is going to give us 9, and we've got 9 squared. Now we know 9 squared is 81. So using our rules, we can simply just do 2 times 2 for the powers, so we get 3 to the power of 4. And again, with practice or working out manually, we can see that is also 81. So this was just a bit of logic behind how the rule works, to hopefully make it a bit easier. Now for foundation students, you won't have to know much more than that. You may have to touch on these next ones briefly, but as long as you understand those three or four, then you should be okay. Okay, but for those higher candidates, then these are definitely very important to understand. So what happens when we have fractional powers? Now we know that four squared equals 16 and three cubed equals 27. But when we reverse it, 16 to the power of a half actually just means the square root of 16. So that is 4. And 27 to the power of a third is the cube root of 27, and that equals 3. Now, that is just an example, but here are the three main rules to know, basically. So x to the power of a half is the square root of x, x to the power of a third is the cube root of x, and x to the power of 4 would be the fourth root of x. Now one to consider, which might be important, is what if you've got something other than a 1 on top of the fraction? So x to the power of 2 thirds. Now the denominator always indicates what type of root you've got. So we can see here we have a cube root. So it's the cube root of x. But because this isn't a 1, it's a 2, then we actually have to square all of that. So imagine you could break it up into x to the power of a third squared. And by our multiplication rules, we simply times them, and 2 times a third is going to give us 2 thirds. So that is how we come about doing that. OK, and finally, what if we get a negative power? Now, negative powers are slightly more involved, um, but all we have to do, first of all, is to get rid of the negative. And to do that, we say we do 1 over 2 to the power, so 1 over 2 to the 3 in this case, is going to be 1 over 8. Now that we know all those six rules, a very common, especially in the higher papers, a very common question to get is where they combine a lot of the rules. 
Now at first it looks horrible, it looks very difficult, but you can quickly see if we break it down, we have a rule here, we have a rule combined in the top, and then we have another rule in the denominator of the fraction. So first of all look at the first one, x to the power of 2, all cubed. Now from our rules we know that we, when we've got brackets we simply times the powers together. So x to the power of 2 times 3 is going to be x to the power of 6. Now we have that times the power of 4, times x to the power of 4, and we want to divide that by the bottom bit there. Now I think it's really important to write out these steps, even if this is only worth one or two marks, I think it's really important to write them out step by step to make sure you don't make any mistakes. So for this next part, we can resolve the numerator and the denominator in one because it keeps it nice and clear. x to the power of 6 times by x to the power of 4 we're going to have x to the power of 10, because remember our rule of timesing, we add the powers. And then divide by x to the power of 5, divide by x to the power of 2. So 5 and 2, we subtract them because we're dividing this time, leaving us with x to the power of 3. And finally, we have another division, so we subtract the powers, and we're going to be left with x to the power of 7. Now I hope that helped, and I think I've covered everything there. So thank you for watching.